Hello and welcome to Anton's TV. My name is Jack and today I'm very excited to be joined by the rather lovely... Ah, thank you. Kent Iverson from Austrian Audio. Kent, pleasure, man. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. And just going to get it in quickly, Kent and I are going to talk about the creation of this brand new company and uh, what they've got for us. Uh, if you want to hear more audio examples, there will be some videos coming out of right. the shootout mm -hmm. and in particular showing off some very unique technology that's in these microphones. But other than that, let's have a high five and we're going to start talking about... Austrian audio, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're back in. We're back in. You've got a very interesting looking briefcase in there. Yes. And we have a quick chat. You've lived in the best places in the world and you said you, you've yes. moved to I Vienna tried. twice. Mm -hmm. Why have you moved back there? Tell us about Austrian audio. Well, as you know, most audio aficionados would know, uh, AKG was shut down in Vienna. So on the 70th anniversary of the company, it was closed by the parent company. And we I put know, it was on the anniversary. 70 years, baby. Oh. What a way to celebrate. Yeah, thanks. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but we have this engineering know-how and you know all of this powerhouse team creating classic microphones and headphones for decades. Mm -hmm. um, what are we going to do with this coming? We see the train coming down the track. And we put together Austrian audio in order to keep as much of that engineering knowledge and resources within Vienna and build up a new microphone, headphone, and audio brand that has the heart of Viennese engineering and making as much as possible in Europe and in Vienna, and even in some cases handcrafting. So like our first microphone features a handmade one at a time capsule. And that's a bit about what we're trying to do is make pro audio fun, make it not an item that you would purchase and have to replace, but something of permanence you could hand down to your kids that has some legacy and heritage to it. So with the, the hand, I didn't realize they were handmade out there. Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, it's so brand new, this brand. Um, when, you, when you said about the durability of it, does that mm. play out in, in the future, like you said, for a lifetime? Because it's handmade, are they more serviceable, do you see down the future? Well, uh, one of the things is we can assure the quality. Uh, right. We even make our own test and measurement equipment that is at such a kind of a next level, as people would say, that we sell it to other manufacturers in the world. Right. Um, if you need to test audio at high speed and with great precision, we make... Um, customized systems that do all that because when you're making something like a diaphragm or a driver or you know a headphone band you can't go to the store and buy test equipment that can measure resonant frequency of something or how it responds to impulses while under a certain load or anything you have to build these things so we have a whole test and measurement engineering staff mm -hmm. and we can dial in uh, test and measurement systems that will guarantee a result every time so already the quality control is exceptionally high and the way we match our microphones to each other is unique. No one's done exactly what we're doing before. I think we'll get into that in a bit. Oh, that's good. But, you know, we're doing a lot of hand work, high quality parts, no uh, best cost country trying to outsource everything. We're yes. much more an insourcing yeah. company. We like open source software, which we provide to people. We do as much as we can in a very open and sharing manner, yet at a very high quality. We know how to make microphones. We've been doing yeah. it for decades. So. so you've set it up really well. Can I, should we introduce what the mics are? Yes. I. It looks great. What's in brief briefcase, man? Yeah, so in this rather pedestrian briefcase, we have some very high-end mics. very Austrian briefcase. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a, slight, <laughs> slight, it's a bit like we're doing Pulp Fiction. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. have? So here uh, we have examples of the microphones that are shipping in just actually a few days out to you guys. This is the OC818. It is a multi-pattern microphone and the capsule, which I have here, is handmade one at a time. There's a woman wow. in our company, if you, you can pick oh, it up. Oh, can I? Yeah. Look at that. And this is what it looks like in the mic, so I brought a kind of an example of how it sits in there, and we'll go into the tech stuff of this, I think, a bit later. Oh, yeah. But um, the woman who makes our capsules for us was the former head transducer, high-end transducer assembler at the old company. And she started in 1980 and worked her way up to 1996 building all the high-end transducers. Wow. And was the senior high-end transducer builder and assembler for that company. And of course, we wanted to bring her on board with us and retain her. So she's making this. Her name is Monica. You can see her actually on our YouTube channel making capsules. I love that. And uh, she has now brought on a second person as um, someone to carry on the legacy, really. Mm. So she, she's trained up another young lady named Jennifer, who's now making capsules as well under the tutelage of Monica. So we have two fabulous women making our capsules. By oh, hand. Kent, you're selling it to me. I love this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm all about knowing the people behind it. I've had that experience with guitar amps and mm -hmm. guitars. Yeah, it's a bit similar to pickup winding with yes. your bar pickups. Exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's a similar story to that, right? And when you actually play them, 
and you hear the difference and you feel that connection, mm -hmm. I totally get it. So what a lovely touch to have in yeah. there. Um, and yeah, you've got two coming out. Mm -hmm. Should we start going into the differences between the two and what type of Absolutely. customer can come to you at yeah. the moment and what, why they would pick each one? Yeah, cer certainly. So I know the Euro pricing and the, the British pound pricing is not quite in Oh, that's yet. Theresa May's so. fault. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> to strive to get you a better microphone, the OC818 is a multi-pattern microphone. It's a true condenser microphone. It has two types of high-pass filters in it and two types of pads that do different things. So we tend to do things a little bit special and different. Why just make you know something that cuts more and then cuts more? That's not very musical. So as an example, with and it applies to both. So the OC18 is a cardioid version. You'll see it's missing one function, which is the multi-pattern selector. It's a fixed cardioid, and this guy does all the patterns, but the filters and the pads are the same. Right. And on the filtering, the 40 and 80 hertz are steeper second-order filters because you want to get rid of handling noise, wind, junk that might be popping yeah. up. And then 160 is a gentler first order that goes down slowly because you want to preserve some of the chest resonance possibly of a singer. But when it hits 80, it goes back to second order, steeper. So you have three choices as to how so you're going to cut that. Yeah. So it's you know, decades of design of musical instruments. We look at a mic as a musical instrument. And it's instrument. what I do in post anyway. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it just stays a step along the way, right. uh, I find, because I'm always doing those type of things. I'm looking at the Maltese Falcon over there. He does a lot of production as well. <laughs> And uh, how thoughtful. Yeah, so then the pad is another you know, special thing where in, in the minus 10 setting, you're actually dropping the bias voltage to the capsule so the capsule's not slamming the internal circuitry so hard. So if you happen to clip the internal of, of the microphone, although it takes 146 decibels to do it without the pads, which is like a jet engine, um, you would just put this first one in and it would drop the bias voltage here to protect the circuitry. But if you're still slamming your mic prees or anything downstage, the second one adds another 10 dB of gain reduction on the output of the mic, so it's a two-stage thing. So it's not just a brute force, let's just cut mm. output. So it's done rather intelligently in that way. Um, are we going to get into the super special bit here? Yeah, let's get into, into the really cool nerdy stuff that um, not only are these handmade, these, uh, these lovely capsules, the CKR12, um, I'll tell you what's special about them, oh, beyond yeah. just the handmade part. Yeah. So there was a project that started years ago in one of the engineers' free time, and he wanted to find out why is the C12 microphone so coveted, what makes it special. And we had access to many microphones, so through our artist relations network and personal contacts, we own some. Um, the senior service tech owns some and services most of Europe and the world because he knows how to do it. So he looked at all of these microphones and measured them and narrowed them down to the best six units that were all fairly similar, mm -hmm. worked as they're supposed to, and then decided to take those parameters and make the exact same physical parameters in a new capsule that could be handmade in Vienna. And if you've ever seen a vintage CK12 capsule, the heart of the uh, capsule itself, you can see it in our videos online actually, it has multiple, yeah, multiple rings around it, uh, sorry, multiple screws into the ring where you have to tension each one and sometimes, even after the initial test, they would then have to take the capsule, open it up again, and hand lap and sand it down and put it back together again. Really slow, laborious process. The initial failure rate was 65%. So you build it, 65% failure rate right away. Then they would have to take it apart and keep going. So yeah. the yield of microphones, when you look at how many mics were made and how long it was in existence, was basically one mic a day, which is... You can't, we can't do that. No. So one of the big problems was brass. Brass has some uh, construction uh, advantages in terms of it's easy to work with because it's a softer metal, you can drill it, but it's not quite it's temperature stable. And uh, we went away from that. This is a high grade, high density ceramic material, this black. That's why it's so hefty. Mm. So if you pick that up and you feel how weighty that is in your hand. It's about the weight of the Maltese Falcon, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is, it, it gives you imperviousness to temperature change because ceramic is so stable so it's not going to actually cool. shift and, and move around. Plus they are so precise in manufacture that one of the things we don't have to worry about as a variable is a change in the shape or any weird bump or hump in the ceramic. They're all, you know, quote unquote perfect really right off the line. So it makes assembly by hand much faster because you're not dealing with units that might possibly be a little out of spec. They're all in spec. Um, that's the core of it was pretty much an 18 month R&D project to get the voicing of this and the construction method of this done to where we can make something in Vienna with pride and have the output on these pins give you the tonality of, you know, exceptionally crafted CK12. And this is the CKR12, 
which is a bit of what we call Danglish, Deutsch, and English together. So it's uh, capsule ceramic, so for ceramic, and then ringa for ring. Well, yeah. <laughs> as a heritage of the CK12. Did you feel the shackles were off once huh. you... Because this sound, I can see the passion, yeah. I can hear the thought process. Uh, yeah, was that the case? Absolutely. We had, you know, just this amazing powerhouse engineering team who, once we got Austrian audio underway, we still have this to this day where we just all get together and go, what's next, what are we doing? Because we can do whatever we want to. So Without that co in, uh, embedded corporate structure that was there right, before. Right, yeah. about, you know, we can determine our own margin structure. We can determine what we want to be able to do. We um, think we know the market really well, and our focus is on this one brand, as opposed to having to support an entire family of brands, or like maybe if we do something here, it's going to clash somewhere else. Fine, I mean, you can imagine any situation, but <laughs> we're now free to say, look, we always wanted to make this microphone. This is one that's opened up, by the way, so it's easier to see. But... Going back to the engineering of the acoustics of it, we did things like one, you'll see this in a lot of microphones, there'll be a post like this that's holding up the capsule, the capsule's affixed to the post. What happens as you sing into it or recording is the sound hits the post and it sprays and refracts around, and so there's a phase delay when it hits the capsule again. So you either have to engineer around this and tune your capsule differently, but it's just kind of a flaw that you have to work with. So we're like, well, get rid of that. And that's why we have these three suspensions because the whole unit, if you look at it from the side, just is mounted on these rubber suspension arms. Yeah, you can really feel that when you hold it there. Yeah, so that helps to, you can literally use this handheld without vibration if you wanted to sing into it. That's you know not the recommended recording method, but due to the high mass of the capsule and the rubber internal shock mount, it is fairly impervious to handling noise. And another cool feature we did is down here, to trap any stray sound that might be, you know, if it hits the top or comes in from the side, this is a tiny absorber diffuser, much like on your walls here. Yeah. So we've built in a miniature anechoic chamber to suck up any other stray sound that might be inside of here because the ideal is you want a free-floating capsule, like this is the best response in the air, in the middle of nothing, yeah. in, you know, in a field or a meadow. But you can't do that and still protect it, so you have to close it up a bit. Mm -hmm. But you also want to deal with any stray sound that might bounce off something, and so we put an absorber diffuser in the bottom to soak all of that up. That's the acoustic design. There's more to it, but that kind of tells the acoustic story, and then we pass it to the electronics guy. So our head of electronic engineering on this project, his name is well, his nickname is Sepp, that's what everyone calls him, it's, it's Yosef. He had this goal of um, wanting to be able to design and sell a microphone that if you buy this one today, that at any given time, even two years from now, three years from now, the next Austrian audio condenser mic you buy is already matched to it. And most of what matching is, is matching sensitivity. So if we already have extremely tight quality control on the capsules and we know what the end result is gonna be, and we use our own test and measurement systems to guarantee a certain output, the electronics can work with this known consistent factor to give you a known quantity out. And the way that he did this is to put in a microprocessor. And so to be clear, there's no conversion of analog to digital of your signal. All the microprocessor is doing is it's calibrated at the factory to say, if I'm in cardioid mode, 13 millivolts per Pascal output guaranteed across all microphones. So we calibrate those all at the factory that way. Wow. And that way you buy this one today, and at any time you could buy a matched second and it's matched to it. So in my little layman brain, it was always the choice when I started out, oh, I didn't have enough money for a, for a matched pair, mm -hmm. so I bought one. Uh, but then you could never guarantee that they'd be the same in the future, and you basically right. changed that. Yeah. The, so I, if I could buy one now with the, with the money that I've got there mm -hmm. and then expand it to a stereo pair in the future. At any time. And even that applies to and the... That's, that's a yeah. first? That's a first, especially when you can expand it to the cardioid only one. Or back it up and right. say, okay, you know. Yeah. This is, you buy this one, you could even save a little money. Use this as much as you need. There's a cool trick I'll show you later that allows you to do some kind of other stereo recording with one mic. But if you want to do a spaced pair where they have to be apart, mm -hmm. you could buy this one. It's 300 euros cheaper, so I don't know what that's going to be, 280 pounds-ish or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and you have a match pair again because each of them in cardioid mode will have 13 millivolts per pascal out. And if you don't know what that means, 13 millivolts per pascal, it translates into the dB world as 0.07 decibels maximum variance. 
So each mic is within 0.07 dB of each other in terms yeah, of... There'll be someone on YouTube sensitive. who thinks they can hear yeah, they, that difference. Well, you can't, <laughs> e you can't even set a mic pre to that difference, right? So no, it's you, real. There's no it's increment that you can man. do that. So that was one of his design goals, something he always wanted to do and realized in this. All of this is making a lot of sense to me, mate. Oh, which good. is good considering I've got such a small brain. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's... Can, we, can I... I'm so interested about the polar ah, patterns. Well, great. I'll tell you how that came about, because that's... This is one of my favorite things in the story of how this mic came about. So one of the coolest, unique selling points, as they call it USPs in, in marketing nerd language, <laughs> is um, we have produced the first analog microphone with wireless control over the settings. So that's never been done before. And this came out of a completely different idea. We did the microprocessor, and we wanted to have that stabilized voltage. And all the microprocessor is doing is just controlling the electricity presented to bias the capsule. That's it. So mm -hmm. there's no analog to digital conversion of signal. It's just how much voltage is going on given everything else going on with the microphone. So if you look at it, you'll notice it's a unibody. There are no cracks at all, no joins or anything. This is one piece of metal. This is an improvement over things we had done in the past where what that allows for is temperature and humidity stabilization plus more imperviousness to RFI, so radio frequency noise, junk in the air, especially with cell phones and things like that. So microphones are high gain, high impedance, so a lot of gain and impedance, so they pick up anything. Um, we wanted to seal all of that off, but how do you build the microphone and then calibrate it if you've sealed everything? So that's where this idea for, we'll just build a port, and if you look inside, you'll see the port is entirely shielded in metal as well. But we've given you these pins here. There are two pins, I-O to the microprocessor. And one of the engineers one day said, look, we're exposing the pins to the outside world. Why don't we try letting the user bias the capsule wirelessly. And we invented the OCR8 wireless dongle. So this is an optional extra. It's 149 euros. I don't know what it'll be in pounds. Yeah. But all you do is you click it in here. It's powered from the phantom power. Oh, it looks so neat batteries. as well. I was, I was a bit worried. I thought it might. That looks neat. It's the first <laughs> time I've seen this, by the way. Yeah. That looks cool. And then it, it powers up by phantom power. It's like a Tony Stark mic. Yeah, it is, really. It's this, the Iron Man yeah. edition here. And then you would just pair it with your Android or iOS phone, and we can show a, actually a live demo of that and how that works. Well, we're going to do a, yeah. a separate video, I think, showing off that. Yeah. Oh, that's... So, again, no And conversion. when I heard this, I heard, heard it, I was like, okay, cool, but what application does it have? Mm. So ha, ha, what application, why should I get excited about this? I think um, the two easy ones, uh, three, here's three easy examples. You're in the control room, singer's over there. Go ahead and change the polar pattern, set the pads, do whatever without having to get up, right? So that's yeah. the, the simple, that simple and one. And in a live environment, mm -hmm. I mean, these mics are screaming, all the care that you've mm -hmm. put into the absorption mm -hmm. and pickup patterns based on ambient noise. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I was getting excited. So you could you could tune everything and yep. set it up how you want, and without having to get up out of your chair, you're still in the sweet spot. You can just you know save yourself an assistant on your iPhone as well. Yeah. Not it, you've got an app for the computer as well. That's a separate thing, actually. The control, which we call Polar Pilot, which is the app, that one runs only on iOS or Android. Right. Yeah. And there's our specific reasons why, but there is a separate processing plugin we'll get into later called Polar Designer, which is for processing polar patterns, which is super cool and has a number of first time ever things in it too. Great. But the uh, Polar Pilot um, allows you also to save and recall settings. And the way it works is, is rather ingenious. If you look on any microphone, you always have a limited number of selections. And you'll see this one here after Omni is actually a black circle, which is preset mode. We ship it from the factory in a wide cardioid setting. So for, there are a lot of people who aren't interested in wireless control, old school sound engineers, whatnot. They just get a wide cardioid setting, which is very popular. So just use the mic as a classic Viennese microphone, as you would expect. But in black circle mode, it's actually a separate set of memory the microprocessor looks to. And we've flashed it, it's flash memory, with a wide cardioid setting. Please bias the capsule for wide cardioid. But as soon as you put this guy in, this guy's writing to the flash memory, and the microprocessor just reads it, says, what do you got going on, buddy? Right? And we're sending stuff from our phone, hey, change this, do this, do this switching. It's like, yeah, no problem. And we'll show how that works. Wow. So you can store and save settings. You can recall something that worked on a singer, you know, 10 months ago or whatnot. You can have a library of, of cool things you want to do. Um, and yeah. one more yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Limited number of settings on every microphone in the front. With this, you have 255 steps between figure of eight and omni. So it's 255 polar patterns. And you can either scroll through them somewhat smoothly, because it takes time to stabilize the uh, voltage. 
or just incrementally click up and down and you'll see the pattern shift. So 255 polar patterns available with this plus wireless control. And it, it makes me think that you're almost opening up a new avenue uh, in engineering, especially because mm. I've been working in a studio. I'm always going in between the control room and, and the vocal right. booth. And well, I've seen that wireless control, that speed of it. And maybe we're always just doing a notch on the compressor, a notch on the preamp. Mm -hmm. But you've brought in another dimension uh, of tailoring mm -hmm. a sound. And tailoring at the recording section and committing to something. Yes. And getting the sound correct first, right? Which is kind of a disappearing art. But we're an electroacoustic audio company focused. And very I much could on tailor. Acoustic. I could say to that yeah. singer, "Oh, you liked and the preset thing mm -hmm. to tailor as a studio." I can be like, "Oh, when you come in, yeah, you've got your pickup pattern." Because mm -hmm. it, do, how do you find it changes the sound? Like, it, what's the experience like going through things incrementally? Well, incrementally, it's so tiny, no one's going to hear the difference. Right. To be honest, like the difference between you know step two one two and two one three, nothing. Mm -hmm. But it's just you have a such a fine gradient. You're definitely going to get the polar pattern that works for a person. If you're, a, let's say, a singer, solo singer of your own, you can just design. Would it, oh, it changes the proximity of course, response? Definitely, yeah. I mean, proximity effect is is um, changes how much is yeah. induced with polar pattern. So if you change the polar pattern, it allows you to either get closer to the mic or maybe you have to stand further. And some things you can't tell them where to be. Oh, you yeah. know, when a singer comes into your studio, you can't mm -hmm. go, oh, sorry, mate, Can you, they, they've mm -hmm. grown up eating mm -hmm. the mic. Or, mm -hmm. And so you could kind of change the pattern mm -hmm. to deal. Yeah. Oh, in an ideal studio that's well treated, if they are just eating the mic far too much, you could open up the pattern a bit more so you have less proximity buildup. But also in Polar Design or the plugin, we have a solution for that too. So that's a separate thing so once you've recorded that we can do for treating and taming proximity effect. Yeah. yeah. But um, this also gives you one more cool new thing, which we can show on the app window. Yeah. Is it's sending in real time a monitoring. There's a logging window. If you happen to, you know, it's 146 dB again. If you happen to, without pads, maximum level. If you happen to clip the internals, it'll light a flag on your phone. You'll see a red boop come up saying you clip something inside. And that way you could just reach over and go minus 10 dB setting and bring it down a little bit. So it's oh. controlling the bias voltage wirelessly, yeah. but it's monitoring the internal circuitry to see for any, if there's any clipping points, and then it'll flag it, and we'll see that on the Android phone I brought somewhere. I, yeah. think, I think we're gonna have that in a separate video mm -hmm. where we yes. just go through all, all that. Mm -hmm. And what do you get uh, when you buy one of these, uh, what comes in the package, it's uh, in Outside the box? Outside of a warm, fuzzy feeling. A uh, warm, fuzzy feeling, and you know a lot of <laughs> stuff to learn. And yes. But be excited, it's the type of stuff I'm excited by, actually. Mm. I can see the passion in there. I can, I can hear the sense. When I heard about it, I went, do we really need that? But then I could see that it's coming through that breaking of the chain. Yeah. So everything, like your passion, when you, your eyes lit up about this unibody. It's great, man. Yeah. And look, it's I mean, good to see. So much, you know, these guys and, and, and women who worked on bringing this product out have decades of experience. I think now we went from a team of 22 to 29 currently, and we just keep growing. Um, they are obsessed with what they do, they live for audio, and um, just have decades of experience. I once did the math when we had 22 persons, we had 335 cumulative engineering years, so mm. not counting knuckleheads like me in marketing, but just the hardcore engineers right. who are working on this stuff for that much experience and time, and now we have more of them. So we've hired more AKG people, former AKG people, back to the company. And in a, I've seen lots of Mike's come out over the years since I've been in here, and uh, I think we get caught up a lot, uh, just from personally, mm. about those, you know, the look of it. I almost lost a little bit of faith in the OEM market there for a while, mm. and uh, it's been lovely for you to come in and just like hear it from the horse's mouth because it's all you. legit and it, it all makes sense now because when I look when I look at it you people I saw online as well because I thought I don't know anything about assurance this is why it's so nice to hear it um, but everyone trying to kind of presume what it is from the look of it so yeah. I'm glad you've explained it and once you've explained it once you get your hands on it when can we get our hands on these these will ship out from our uh, factory in Vienna on probably the third or fourth of June so we're just days away and then whatever time it takes to permeate out is, you know, let's just say two weeks or whatever it may be, two or three weeks from now. Uh, yeah, and I was alluding to in the box, do you, oh, sorry, what does yes, it come with? That. So um, 
We We've have had, a couple of different packages. Yeah. Um, we are doing the first, because it's the 818, we're doing the first 818 boxes of special box packaging thing for no extra cost. So it'll include a pop filter, which we won't carry as a, a skew to sell. It's only going to be in this one, and that'll be it. Yeah. It's going to have a booklet we've designed that has company history and some other interesting tidbits. And uh, we're thinking of having everybody sign it, but that's going to take a lot of time. But uh, we're going to either it's going to be our CEO or all the employees will sign it. We're not sure yet. But we're just getting those coming in, the, the final ones of those. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple little odds and ends and bits in there that we do. But it, uh, where it is the same as the regular shipping package, the studio set, as we call it, comes with a shock mount, a spider, as you would expect. Mm -hmm. It comes with the uh, clip that is actually holding this one in place. We used it over here. And you get, uh, one thing we left out about the microphone is there's this other adapter cable. So if you're not using the Bluetooth port, you can actually record dual cardioid out using one diaphragm for cardioid and the other diaphragm for cardioid out of here. But we'll go into that more. I think when we talk about Polar Designer. Yeah. But with one That's mic, for another video. Yeah, snap this guy in and you can record basically left and right or whatever you want to deem the two cardio. Oh, to be. I want to hear about that. Yeah, We're so going to hear about the, that. That's in there. And another set that we have is for the live guys because they don't want the case. So the studio sets come with a case for storage, a metal case with a handle. Um, they don't need that because they're on tour and they have their anvil case with the drop in mic slots. So we just get rid of that and you get the mic and the cable if you get the silver one, the 818, or just the mic and you get the clip on and we sell it in pairs. But nothing's, they're all stereo pairs. So you don't have to go, I need to get the stereo pair set. They're mm. all stereo pairs. You can even have for 5.1 surround multiple units that are all match in sensitivity. It's all very posh and very Austrian. Yeah. <laughs> it does. You yeah. know, I, it's, it's nice to hear. Uh, I, I need it. And we're going to get in there. We've got Meg here in today as well. She's going to sing, be singing yes. for us in this other video. But other than that, thank you very much, mate. Hey, Let's thanks. go get some lunch. Lovely, yeah. Let's Austrian Audio, check it out. Uh, if you like our videos, consider subscribing. If you don't like our videos, let us know, and we'll try and learn from it. See you. <laughs>